There is a place, not here or there, but somewhere in between. There is a space in the thin air that really can be seen. If you listen and observe, you may be surprised. Some may call it Camelot, or even Paradise. Some may say you cross a bridge, others through a door. But all I know about this place is that I call it Evermore. Evermore. Good evening, sweet spirits. Welcome to the show. My name is Suzanne Sorrell, and I'm the host of the Evermore Paranormal Network. On this episode, I'm going to talk to you about some more paranormal equipment, and I'm calling this episode Bells and Whistles. If you've been watching the show, you know that I did an equipment episode a while back and I talked about basic stuff. Well, that was stuff that you really don't have to go out and buy. It's the stuff that, the core equipment that you need. This episode, I thought I'd bring out some more fun things that there's noises, there's lights, and I just thought it'd be, it'd be more uh, fun when you're filming or you're out on a ghost hunt and these things happen. So. Let's start with some basic stuff again, but the first one I want to talk about is an EMF field tester. Now, I got this years ago, and um, I actually, I bought it, like, probably one of the first pieces of equipment I bought. It was like 10 bucks. It measures um, EMF, or electromagnetic field. I don't, this one I don't have a battery in because I didn't have an extra 9 volt for today. But the, it will show a number here as to what the level is. And this is really comparable to the K2 that everybody uses, or you click it on and then it lights up. Well, on the K2, it lights up. On this, it gives you a number. Now, you may recognize this. I noticed when I was watching the show Ghosts of Shepherdstown, Bill was always carrying this as a standard piece of equipment. Um, you'd see him walking like this down the street in the promo, et cetera, with this. Uh, it's a cheap piece of, a piece of equipment. I don't know what it is now, but it was like $9.99 back in the day. And it's a basic piece of equipment, but I, it was a few things I had that I wanted to continue talking about. Um, so what people use this for, like the K2, is when you first go into a location and you want to get the basic EMF readings at the location, things that give off a reading prior to going in to actually investigate. So that's the first thing. Now, this one ha is a little more exciting because it looks like a gun. This is, um, this is an infrared thermometer. Now, everybody, it looks like a gun. And I'm not going to point it at the camera and turn it on because I may uh, damage the camera. So I'm going to point it, it, it will take a temperature. I'm going to point it over at that chair. I'll tell you what it squeeze the trigger it says it is 74.6 degrees it's 75 now okay so you heard that everybody loves to use this now you you know the great thing about knowing the temperature in a room is when you are uh, ghost hunting uh, if the temperature increases substantially or usually it will decrease substantially, and I'm talking five degrees or more. While, you know, you're sitting there, like if I, let me put this, turn this on again. Right now it is around 75 degrees. If this started dropping, which I know there are some spirits in this studio, I have learned that, and activity's been going on tonight as a matter of fact, it always does when I'm in here. Um, if this were to drop substantially, I'd be going, okay, they're here, but right now it's not, at least not over at the chair. But everybody likes to use that because it looks like a gun. 
I think I paid about $35, $40 for it years ago. It's one of my earliest pieces of equipment that I bought. Now, nowadays, equipment, all, most equipment is multi-purpose. So, you know, thermometers on the mel meter, a lot of them. You try to buy, I mean, you only got two hands. You know, you're out roughing it somewhere in, say, an abandoned building or something. You, you know, you can only carry so much equipment. Now, some people have the vests and they have it all or they hook it on everywhere. But really, how many pieces of equipment can you use at one time? So it's best to have a piece of equipment, one piece of equipment that has a whole bunch of purposes that, that you can eliminate, you know, hands-free really. So I don't use that very often unless somebody wants to play with the, the gun. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is my laser grid and a tripod. I don't have it hooked on the tripod for tonight because I wanted to demonstrate it. But you can hook the, okay, this is a laser, a laser grid and it's, um, this one's green and I'm going to try to demonstrate it. I don't want to point it toward the camera. You know not to ever point these. They're, they're actually dangerous to like point them to the sky and all that. There's rules against that. But I'm going to point it behind me and hope that I hit at least you can see it on the curtain and I'm not sure if you can but anyway it'll put a you're in the dark somewhere you will and this thing this aperture adjusts to however little pattern you want this one's green like I said but I have blue purple red they come in all different colors but I have to say I've, I've used all different colors and the green one I think is the best one because it shows up the best in the dark so you'll play with this aperture, figure out what you know pattern you want to cast onto into the dark hallway or whatever. Say there's claims that there are shadows. This will really help because if a shadow or something passes by the grid, it'll black the grid out and you'll be able to see the shadow better. So that's what that's for. As for the tripod, well these, these you have to hold the, push the button down to keep it on. So usually I tape it down and then we tape it to or clamp it to this tripod, sit it somewhere, turn it on, put the cameras on, and hope we catch a shadow or a spirit. Now, the next thing, let's see, what am I going to talk about next? Motion detector. Simple piece of equipment. I'm going to turn it on. You're going to see it's going to come on at first. Let's see if I can, I'm going to turn it on right now. I don't know, let me see if it's going to show up here. I'm trying to see whether it came on. I did test all the batteries last night. Okay, now you can see it. It is on. I'm going to turn it to the side. Well, what I got to do is show it. And you'll see that it has a motion detector underneath. Um, the light comes on when I first turn it on. Let's see if it's turned off. Once I touch it, it's going to come on again. So it's still on. Okay, when you first turn it on, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to describe it to you, then I'll show you. Okay, when I turn it on, the light's going to come on. You've got to sit it down. Don't touch it. And there's a, a motion sensor right here. So you put this somewhere. If anything goes by, this will come on. Again, you've got to have your cameras on, because if you're not around, you won't know that it came on. Um, this will, And it will go off after so many seconds. So I'm going to turn this on and leave it on so you can see what I'm talking about, and I'll go on to the next piece of equipment. Okay, so it's going to light up. Now, if anything goes by, it, should, it will go out after a few seconds. But if anything went by while I'm talking, or if I happen to cross that uh, sensor, uh, it'll go off. I mean, it'll come back on. You know what I'm saying. Now, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way. It's probably going to light up again, but it'll go out. This next thing, be ready for this. It is an early piece of, by the way, 10 bucks, easy, cheap equipment. This next thing is a, a dog whistle, actually. I got this years ago, one of my earliest pieces of equipment because it was about 10 bucks. And um, I was too cheap to buy the high price things. I mean, you can get a lot of this equipment cheap. You don't need to go spend $200 for the same thing you can get. And it, it suits the you know, function. It does what you need for 10 bucks. So when I turn this on, it's going to be loud because I'm moving it. This is a dog whistle motion detector, but well, I'm going to turn it on. It's going to be loud for a second, so be, re be ready. And it didn't go off. Try the other way. 
Okay, you heard that, right? Well, this works. That's what, how it works. I'm going to touch the desk. It works on vibration. And so, okay. It's very sensitive. That sensitive. I'm going to touch the desk and you'll see that it's going to go off and that's how it works. Simple as that. So, if you are, if you, I just turned this off, let's, okay. So, if you, if you have claims of, say, there's somebody going up and down the hallway, spirit-wise, something's going up and down the stairs, sit, sit that on a stair, sit that in the hallway, and it'll let you know. And my last piece of equipment for this segment is a geo-motion detector. It's the same thing as this, except it's going to show you with the lights. That shows you with sound. This shows you with lights. And I'm going to, you can see how it's going off and on and all that, right? Okay, I'm going to put it down. And I can't see it and show you at the same time, but it should light up. Uh, it probably did again. Okay, so what this does is shows the lights. Again, if you want to show some kind of vibration issue that's going on, footsteps in the hallway, whatever, that's what that does. It may be, I can't tell. It's probably going to go off when I touch it. Okay, I'm going to hit the desk and it should light up. I don't know if it is, but I hope it does. I'll do it here so I can see. Okay. Yes, you can see it. Okay, so those are some simple bells and whistles kind of thing, literally a whistle. We're going to take a quick break and we come back. I'm going to show you the other side of the desk here and some other equipment that are really fun toys. Welcome back. So now I'm going to talk to you about three more pieces of equipment. They're actually really fun pieces of equipment. You know, it makes it exciting when you have, you know, like I said, bells and whistles going off. Literally, I don't have any bells. I did have a whistle, but the point is, you know, noises, lights, it's fun. Makes ghost hunting much more fun. If you've been ghost hunting, you know that there's a lot of sitting around in the dark quietly waiting, watching, listening. So when something all of a sudden lights up in the, in the dark, makes a noise, it's exciting. And this is one of those pieces of equipment. I bought this at a store in Gettysburg and it's called a Rim Pro. It works a lot like a millimeter and I talked about millimeters in my first episode on equipment. You turn it on, you turn it on and, it, okay, it's already going off. What it does is, if something comes to it, near it, and touches the antenna, it'll make a, a noise. It also has the lights that go off. So, you know, you want this, it's, the problem with this is it's super sensitive. If I get near it, I'm not even touching it and it's going off. I tried to use this one time. Again, it's a lot like a, a millimeter, so, this is fun because of the lights, the sound, but I took this, I'm going to turn it off. I took this to a cemetery one time. I was doing a research project. It happened to be in March. March is very windy. Well, the wind was making this thing go off. It was just crazy. So it's very, it's kind of oversensitive, but stick it in a dark place somewhere and hope a spirit comes by and touches it and it will give you some exciting footage and it'll it'll make your heart jump now this this next piece of equipment I love it's a universal prop alarm I'm holding it it's I have it hooked right now I don't have it on I have it hooked to a Garcina Garcia Beanie Baby now I I have a lot of Beanie Babies my mom collected them and I inherited them but anyway this is um, this says uh, universal trigger prop alarm now, I'm not turning it on yet. Well, I'll hold it up. No, I can't hold it up. I was going to say I'll hold it up, but it, it'll affect how it works. I have it hooked. There's two little clips here, and I have it hooked to this Beanie Baby. So when I turn it on, it might, it'll probably come on for a sec. Let me just turn it on. It shouldn't do, it'll probably come on when I turn it on because I'm touching it, but let's see. No. Okay, it is on. Now I think I need a stronger battery in here because um, it's not really making a lot of noise when it goes off, but when you would hook this to any 
prop that you wanted to use. Right now they have things out where you know you have a, a, a car, a bear, a doll, whatever, and it has the thing in it, this alarm in it. I have the universal one, so you can hook this to anything. You can also hook it to like jewelry or any kind of prop that you want to use to lure the spirits to you. So I'm just going to show you real quick on this before I run out of time. I'm getting near this, not even touching it. So if a spirit comes near this doll, this is going to go off. I think it needs a better battery because it's not making the loud piercing noise that it should. Turning it off now. Lastly. Again, this is, one of, this is a great piece of equipment, and it's expensive, and it's, it's one of the first that ever came out. Um, the first Ovilus. It's not the first one, I don't think. I think it's the second version. This is called Ovilus X. When this first came out, all you had was, I'm going to just do this real quick. I'm going to turn it on. All you had was this, and you had to try to figure out what was being said. Okay, when you turn it on, there's all, all different kinds of modes, but this is dictionary mode, which I use all the time. If it says anything, I have no, it just said something, right? I'm like, uh, what is that? For a long time, I had to guess at what it said. Then they came, it, it's, it's talking. Spirits are manipulating this right now. It has a, a word database in there, and spirits can manipulate it. But the best thing is to hook it, I think it just said Bill, okay? The best thing is to hook it. Two, they came out with this reader. Oh, it's talking away, and I don't know what it's saying. But now, turn the reader on, and I can tell you what it's saying. And the last, it says, it hasn't said anything now that I've hooked it in. Oh, you're not going to talk now? It said bacon. Bacon. You know, why, you want some bacon? Are we talking money? Are we talking food? Tell me a few more words and I got to sign off. We got to get going. We're out of time. What's your last word for the show? I can't wait too long. Okay, the last word is wed. Could that be wed as in Mary or Wednesday? Today is a Saturday. So, no, I'm already taken. So, thank you for offering the spirit. Hi, my name is Gabriel Chase. I'm with Evermore Paranormal. I am a junior investigator, and I am also the tech assistant. Today I wanted to show you my arsenal of usually what I carry with me while I'm out hunting with the team, ghost hunting. So just to start off simple, start with a voice recorder. Now here's just an Olympus voice recorder I bought from Walmart a few years ago. Uh, Usually I don't use it too much, as much as I probably should. Most of the time I use my spirit box over here. So it's a good buy to have. It's very valuable. It's basic stuff that uh, paranormal investigators use. Next up I have a, uh, a temperature radar gun. I think it just uses a, a laser to, uh, you know, measure temperature. Uh, I use it to uh, I use it to uh, measure temperatures and anything sudden like temperature drops or you know temperature skyrockets and heat. So yeah, that's usually what I use that for. Next up is my spirit box, which is what I like to use more. It's one of my probably my most favorite thing to use. Uh, basically, what it does is it scans through radio frequencies at a very fast rate, creating white noises for the spirits to use to talk and come through and communicate with a paranormal investigator. I've had some really interesting things go on with the spirit box, so I think it's a, it's a pretty valuable thing to have on your carry when you have with you on investigations. Another one of my favorites that I have is the Ovulus 4. Uh, I believe it came out about two or three years ago. Uh, I like it a lot. Uh, the only problem I have is for some odd reason it likes to say the SD card isn't in what it is, but other than that, it's a really great tool to have. I love using this on when we go on locations and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy using this. Uh, next up is a, a pretty standard piece of equipment that we use on the team is the K2, which measures EMF uh, or electromagnetic 
energy field. Uh, the lights right here will light up if there's something that's interfering with the sensor on this. Usually it's pretty easy to tell if it's electrical or something actually passing through it because with electrical what I've noticed is that it'll hold a steady reading whereas if it's something that might be paranormal or unexplainable the lights will just continue to keep flashing and flashing. So it's also pretty basic. I, I like using this too. Uh, but it's not something I use as much compared to the, uh, the mo meter I have right here, but I definitely really love using this. So next up, like I just said, is the mel meter. It's an EMF meter also. It's, uh, it's a little built a little bit more better in my opinion than the uh, K2 meter. It's a lot more reliable. It holds more accurate EMF readings. And the thing I really like about this is it's more visual. So it shows you the EMF it also shows you the temperature and that's what this the yellow thing right here is for it measures temperature so I really enjoy using this too because I can pick things up on this that I can't pick up with the K2 meter so I definitely love using this mel meter a lot more than I use and also a cool thing about it is it has a flashlight on it too so that's what I really like about this also next up I, I actually bought this at a vendor a vendor in Gettysburg. Uh, I've been wanting to look for one of these for a pretty long time mostly because holding a handheld laser, I had another one, a green laser, but it was handheld only and I had to hold on a button constantly. So a plus with this is that it has a power button on the back and it also has a tripod where I can just set it somewhere and hit a button and the lasers just stick right there. I don't know, it's hands free. So it's very reliable, I like using this a lot. Haven't caught too much with it yet, but only because it's brand new. So I'm sure I'll get some more stuff once I get going with it. Next up is my black UV light. It's really good for taking pictures, even with a cell phone camera or anything like that. I've got a lot of good evidence with this, a lot of uh, faces, stuff like that. So, so far I've gotten a lot of good results out of my black UV light. I really love using this. And then last up is my flashlight. Pretty much every paranormal investigator should carry a flashlight on them. It's also basic because you don't know on location if you stumble on something or fall if the electricity goes out or something. So yep this is all I have in my arsenal of things that I carry with me on the field when I investigate. So uh, thank you and have a good night. This haunted place with my team and tow my equipment on, wearing a resting bitch face. I'm not afraid of spiders or snakes or a little dirt and dust. When I'm on a case, my mission is simply to go bust. Simply to go bust. I'm a real badass ghost buster. Nothing scares me. I've seen it all through the years, and a challenge is what I need. Don't be fooled by my charm, I'm as tough as they come. Although I may wear lipstick and high heels and get my nails done. And get my nails done. I'm a real badass ghostbuster, I'm coming after you. You don't have a chance to get away, cause I'm good at what I do. I'm damn good at what I do. Don't piss me off, I'm gonna get you, no matter where you go. To the attic or the basement, I'll find you, so you'd better hit the road. Don't judge a book. By its cover, I look fear square in the eye. I'm not backing down to another. I chase goes till I die. I'll chase goes until I die. I'm a real badass ghostbuster. Don't mess with me. I've seen it all through the years. Even demons should take heed. Don't 
be fooled by my beauty I'm as tough as they come although I may wear pink and pearls I'll get the job done I'll get the job done I'm a real badass Ghostbuster, I'm coming after you You don't have a chance to get away Cause I'm good at what I do I'm damn good at what I do I'm a real badass Ghostbuster So thank you for watching the Evermore Paranormal Network. Until next time, peace out. So in the end, what have I said is only that I'm sure. For all I know about this place, is that I call it ever